Coming up next on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. Everybody likes it as a matter of fact. And somehow this warm glow we feel when we are praised or when our name is in print is something of the vitamin A to our ego. Nobody is unhappy when they are praised, even if they know they don't deserve it, and even if they don't believe it. The only unhappy people about praise is when that praise is growing too much towards somebody else. But everybody likes to be praised because of this real drum major instinct. You're listening to the Holistic Wealth Podcast with host Keisha Blair, author of Holistic Wealth and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And now, here's your host, Keisha Blair. We have another special solo episode, and today the whole world celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and we're also celebrating on the podcast as well. And we have this episode for you today, which is inspired by his work and legacy and it's on lessons on finding purpose and these lessons stem from some of the teachings of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now before I go on I just want to state again that this podcast is sponsored by the Institute on Holistic Wealth and you can check out the Institute on Holistic Wealth's website at www.instituteonholisticwealth.com. There are a range of resources and courses available to help you live a holistically wealthy lifestyle. So back to the topic at hand. Now, I am so honored to speak about this just because in holistic wealth, when we talk about life purpose, the whole first part of the book is intended to help you build your life purpose portfolio. And for those who are listening to the podcast for the very first time, Feel free to grab a copy of the book. It's everywhere online, globally and in bookstores. And so the book is really geared towards building purpose. And it's so amazing how the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had so many lessons, right, on achieving purpose. And his famous, famous speech that he delivered on August 20th, 1963, when he stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and spoke about his dream, not only for the United States and North America, but for the world in general, right? He called for civil and economic rights. He called for an end to racism. He called out the gap between the rich and the poor. And so that I have a dream speech inspired us all to dream big. It inspired us to not only go after what we want to see in our own lives, but It inspired us to think bigger, right? Think bigger than just us and think bigger than just ego. What we want to see for the human race, what we want to see for humanity. I'm just going to pause here for you to listen to a snippet of that speech before I go on, because it really is a call to action. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, yes! a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom yes. and the security of justice. Yes. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is 
the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until that is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining jumping off point for talking about purpose. And I know so many people are looking towards this new year, 2023, right? With renewed hope and optimism. Many people have big dreams. Many people have set big goals. How can we achieve our purpose? And how can we set ourselves on a path to achieve those goals? And one of the lessons from him, I think, is to start small. Start small with those dreams and in terms of our goals, think about them in terms of wisdom, goals with wisdom and setting practical goals is important. They should be attainable. They should be practical so that you get that early momentum. And if you want to think about your purpose and your dreams and goals as a campaign, right? And think about a campaign over time, how it snowballs. It starts small. And then you gain momentum over time. And so there's so much that we can learn from him in terms of setting dreams and goals and in terms of purpose. There's a quote that I have in Holistic Wealth that says we all have the power to achieve purpose. And that's from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says we all have the power to achieve purpose. So when you think about power, think about it in terms of your life and how you are equipped to achieve your purpose. And when I train students at the Institute, I often tell them to write out their story of self. What's your story of self? Who are you? Where do you come from? Where are you going? What makes you unique? Write that down. And it's so unbelievable how much wisdom you can glean from that in terms of setting your mission setting your values and crafting a personal mission statement for yourself. And so when we think about even purpose and goals, it's very easy to get carried away with thinking about big dreams and big goals, but think about even impacting one life. And if you can impact one life, that's making a huge difference. Now in the book, I spoke about spiritual self-renewal in one chapter and In that chapter, I quoted Martin Luther King Jr. and spoke about how they set the direction of progress in their lives. Now, I spoke about the four laws of spiritual renewal, and you can go through that within your book. Take a personal inventory was number one. Number two, set the direction of progress in your life. And in that specific law, number two, in terms of setting the direction of progress in your life, I spoke about many great leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr., and how they did something almost no one else believed was possible. 
They set the direction of progress for generations to come. They didn't just focus on having a career or a job. They had a vision. They had a mission. For spiritual self-renewal, it is critical to refocus and set the direction of progress in your life. A new commitment to priorities will help keep hope alive. And so that's interesting from this perspective in terms of life purpose and setting that direction of progress in your life. The third law of spiritual self-renewal is renew hope and motivation. And hope was one of those things that Martin Luther King Jr. spoke a lot about. When we listened to that speech earlier, that was hope. That was renewing hope and motivation. He renewed hope and motivation in millions of followers to keep that purpose, to keep that dream alive. And so from millions of followers who were facing racism at the time, they feared lynching, they feared being tear gassed, they were gunned down with horses and dogs and guns. And regardless of those obstacles, they still turned out in droves to support the mission that he had. But one thing that Dr. King did for his followers was to renew their hope and motivation. And this is one of the most prominent examples of the law of spiritual self-renewal in action. So when you think about your purpose and implementing that purpose, one of the key tools in your toolbox when those setbacks come, when the barriers come, because there are going to be barriers, there are going to be times when it seems insurmountable. One of those things to remember is to renew that hope and motivation daily. So those are some key pieces in terms of spiritual self-renewal, in terms of really living life purpose, because spiritual self-renewal is that nucleus that forms the basis of life purpose. And so there is also a drum major instinct, that sermon that Dr. Martin Luther King gave at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And it's so amazing how when we think about living life purpose, a lot of people put their dreams and goals in terms of the context of ego. And that's one of the things that he spoke about that we should not do. It should transcend ego. It should be all for the purpose of humanity. And he spoke about that in his famous drum major instinct sermon. And I want to play a clip of that for you. But I just want to say before I play that clip, just to quote him in terms of drum major and what his interpretation of that in terms of ego and how we set goals and how we pitch each other against each other for competitive purposes, because we think that sometimes to be successful, we need to do that. But he gave that speech and he said, you know what, even at my funeral, don't bring up my Nobel Peace Prize don't talk about my achievements. Talk about what I did to help humanity. And I thought that was amazing. And it's a lesson for us in terms of when we're talking about purpose and how we set our goals and mission in life. They had dreamed, as most of the Hebrews uh, dreamed, of a coming king of Israel who would set Jerusalem free and establish his kingdom on Mount Zion and in righteousness rule the world. And they thought of Jesus as this kind of king, and, and they were thinking of that day when Jesus would reign supreme as this new king of Israel. And they were saying, now, when you establish a kingdom, let one of us sit on the right hand and the other on the left hand of your throne. Now, very quickly, we would automatically condemn James and John, and we would say they were selfish. Why would they make 
such a selfish request. But before we dim, condemn them too quickly, let us look calmly and honestly at ourselves, and we will discover that we too have those same basic desires for recognition, for importance, that same desire for attention, that same desire to be first. Of course, the other disciples got mad with James and John, and you could understand why, but we must understand that we have some of the same James and John qualities. And that is deep down within all of us an instinct. It's a kind of drum major instinct, a desire to be out front, a desire to lead the parade, a desire to be first. And it is something that runs a whole gamut of life. And so before we condemn them, let us see that we all have the drum major instinct. We all want to be important, to surpass others, to achieve distinction, to lead the parade. Alfred Adler, the great uh, psychoanalyst, contends that this is the dominant impulse. Sigmund Freud used to contend that sex was the dominant impulse, and Adler came with a new argument saying that this quest for recognition, this desire for attention, this desire for distinction is the basic impulse, the basic drive of human, human life, this drum major instinct. And you know, we began early to ask life to put us first. Our first cry as a baby was a bid for attention. And all through childhood, the drum major impulse or instinct is a major obsession. Children ask life to grant them first place. They are a little bundle of ego. They have innately the drum major impulse or the drum major instinct. Now, in adult life, we still have it, and we really never get by it. We like to do something good, and you know, we like to be praised for it. Now, if you don't believe that, you just go on living life and you will discover very soon that you like to be praised. Everybody likes it as a matter of fact. And somehow this warm glow we feel when we are praised or when our name is in print is something of the vitamin A to our ego. Nobody is unhappy when they are praised, even if they know they don't deserve it, and even if they don't believe it. The only unhappy people about praise is when that praise is going too much towards somebody else. But everybody likes to be praised because of this real drum major instinct. Now, the presence of the drum major instinct is why uh, so many people are joiners. You know, there are some people who just join everything. And it's really a quest for attention and recognition and importance. And they get names that give them that impression. So you get your groups, and, and they become the grand patron. And, uh, and the little fellow who is henpecked at home needs a chance to be the most worthy of the most worthy of something. It is the drum major impulse and longing that runs the gamut of human life. And so we see it everywhere, this quest for recognition, and we join things. 
uh, overjoyed, really, that we think that we will find that recognition in. Now, the presence of this instinct explains why we are so often taken by advertisers. You know, uh, those gentlemen of massive verbal persuasion. And they have a way of saying things to you that kind of gets you in the bind. In order to be a man of distinction, you must drink this whiskey. In order to make your neighbors envious, you must drive this type of car. In order to be lovely to love, you must wear this kind of uh, lipstick or this kind of perfume. And you know, before you know it, you're just buying that stuff. As Martin Luther King Jr. explains it, drum major instinct is the desire to be first, to lead the parade. It desires recognition, importance, attention, being first. The consequences of this can be devastating. And of course, we all can imagine why it would be devastating. And so when looking at life purpose and implementing our purpose, I think it's a reminder from Dr. King to not start with ego, start with humanity first, put humanity first, not start with the recognition, the accolades. What do I get out of this? Start with how do I even save one life? How do I even impact one life? And there's so much with personal mission and life purpose. There's a part of the book in Holistic Wealth where I mention implementing your life purpose and you think you don't have the resources to do it. One of the things that's very useful to do is to partner with others, partner with others. When it seems too big and it seems too insurmountable, partner with others and have power with other people, whether it's people clubs, organizations to get your purpose off the ground, to get that mission off the ground. And we spoke about the life purpose portfolio earlier. Well, the Institute will be launching a life purpose coaching program in the coming weeks. So I hope you look out for that. It's, it will be posted on the website and it's a life purpose coaching certification program and it will be on the Institute on Holistic Wealth website. And so when you think about that life purpose, think about drumbeat and think about the things that you are passionate about. Think about your legacy in life and what you would want your legacy to look like. In the last episode of the podcast, we spoke about defining success on your own terms Go back to that episode, listen to it, because it speaks about authentically defining success on your own terms, which is also part of life purpose. And so I'm going to leave you here today. It's a shorter episode, but have a great week, everyone. Lots of holistic wealth for you this week and beyond. And let's remember some of these lessons as we go forward in the year this year. Some of these lessons from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Holistic Wealth Podcast with Keisha Blair is brought to you by. Have you joined the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Choose your membership plan at the Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. As a member, you'll get access to free worksheets, advice, coaching, and an intentional design workshop. As you start to live a more holistically wealthy lifestyle, you'll want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning best-selling Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to help you recover from disruption, find your life purpose, and achieve financial freedom. 